Oh, no. In season one, one of your early episodes, uh, you and I were doing a walk and talk down a hallway. What was that word? It was multisyllabic. Adrenocorticotropic. And actually, there's four ways to pronounce it. Adrenocorticotrophic, adrenocorticotropic, adrenocorticotrophic, or adrenocorticotropic. <laughs> I memorized all four. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, and so it, it's in there forever now, isn't it? Because you forever. drilled it so much, right? Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot what the heck it means, but it's in there. <laughs> I had no idea either. <laughs> awesome. I, All right, we, I, didn't get, I didn't get to answer, so I'm going to answer. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm okay. multitasking and I lost you. I'm embarrassed. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I know you've got a lot of notes around your computer right now. Um, it, I would say that, uh, like Doug, I started with a lot of commercials, and those feel real. You know, my very first commercial also got put into movie theaters. So, mm -hmm. like, I remember sitting down to watch a movie, and there I was on the big screen in the commercial, and I stood up and I said, that's me! And everybody <laughs> clapped. <laughs> and then uh, after that was probably Mama, the movie, the horror movie, the Guillermo del Toro uh, produced horror movie Mama was, was one that felt really, uh, really big. And then Star Trek. I mean, like, it's, Star Trek's just so huge. It's, it's hard to not say that this isn't the moment where you feel kind of like, well, that feels special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Hannah. Sorry again. I'm, I'm multitasking. So, all right, we have another question from a fan. His name is William. It's a little lengthy, but let me read it. Across the many Star Trek series, there are several reoccurring episode concepts, including time travel, Western-themed episodes, holodeck malfunctions, and more. It provides a great continuity throughout all iterations of Trek. Discovery has already explored some of these, but if you, you the panelists, could choose, which would you each like to see featured in a future episode? So Hannah, let's start with you. Good call. Uh, absolutely the holodeck. I mean, you know, that's where any dream could come true. So I would want to see something um, with the holodeck. Also, I would love it if it somehow could uh, include Commander Riker. <laughs> <laughs> the holodeck. <laughs> All right, Patrick, how about you? Uh, I've always been a huge fan of the Borg. Uh, I just think they're so complex and, you know, I just love them so much. So I'm not going to say pro or con if Discovery Season 3 has any bore in it. Uh, but yeah, I think I'd, I'd have to say I'd love to explore maybe just like a new alien race too, you know? Uh, encountering something that we've never seen before that could be a, a huge threat to humankind or a huge benefit. So yeah. Excellent. Doug, how about you? Um, I like the concept of the mirror universe. That was that was so fun to uh, to play uh, different parts of myself, you know. Uh, so yeah, if we ever get to revisit that, that would be really delicious. Um, and uh, and 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 it's, it does you know harken back to the original series too, which I love. All right, and Raven, how about you? I'm gonna repeat on what Hannah said because I love the idea of the holodeck. I love the idea of recreating something anything where your imagination takes you and, and it's like, what is real? What is real, but what is in the mind? So just the idea of like seeing into all the characters as to what their deepest fantasies are and those playing out, I just think would be really awesome. Perfect, fantastic. All right, let's keep going with questions because I'm working on something while we're doing. <laughs> Rhonda would like to know, and I believe this is for all of you, what or have you learned about yourself while being involved with Star Trek? Like a strength so discovered about yourself or you are more or less techie than you thought you were? Who wants to start with that? That's a toughie. Mm. Well, Doug, since you said, mm, you got no, it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, uh, I believe well, you know, I, 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 through Saru's journeys, through playing Saru, I have learned so much about fear, the concept of fear, the overcoming of fear, which I deal with in my own life on a daily basis. Um, uh, you know, I've heard it said that, that every decision we make in a day is either out of love or out of fear. That oversimplifies things, of course, but, but, I, but if you look at that, it's like, which, which one am I making this decision based on right now and day, day to day? 
And uh, so watching Saru overcome fear, when he still had his threat ganglia, he was still having to overcome that innate fear to function, to lead, to, to prosper. So then he lost his threat ganglia and realized that that was just a, you know, a phase of life. And now he's, now he can, can live without that unreasonable fear anymore. Um, that's just like, Oh, something I strive for myself in daily life. So, um, yeah, thank, thank, I'm thankful to Saru for teaching me a little bit. Excellent. Patrick. Uh, I think a bit of a uh, mix of like trust and, and stamina. I mean, be, mm -hmm. Star Trek is, is such a huge machine. And first season we were doing 12, 15, 16, 17 hour days. Um, so, and it's like, like back to back days. So you're just so exhausted, so tired. You have all this techno babble that you have to say. Um, all the cameras are on you, long takes, a lot of high intensity moments. And if you screw up, then, you know, they have to do it again. Um, so I've been working as an actor for 10 years now, but there's always been a lot of self doubt of my own ability. And I think we all have that as, as artists, right? Uh, but being on Star Trek and working with such talented people, um, you, you just feel compelled to bring your A game every time you're on set. Uh, and despite the long days, um, despite like the technical difficulties, um, you just, you just kind of give it 110% every time. Um, and it's been just such a gift as an actor to be in that kind of situation to like work your craft day in, day out. Excellent. Raven, how about you? Yeah. Um, Definitely getting around the, the technical aspect of it. And, and you know, Pollard is such an intellectual and, and wrapping my mind. Like, I've played doctor roles before, but not to this level. Um, I don't think anything could ever be <laughs> to this level. So that has always been the challenge. Like, I'm like, holy crap, Pollard is so much smarter than I am. I got to get up there. So it's it's been wonderful in the focus that this character has allowed me. Um, it becomes like this whole meditative thing, actually, um, because working on Star Trek, first of all, I freak out every time. Like I just look at the insignia on the floor and I'm touching things and just grounding myself into the space. So once I calm down from that, it's just, Pollard has helped me to just learn what it is to focus and then there's that using the imagination, right? Like they're obviously like we have our props and everything around us, but then there are things that are not seen. So this is one of the few shows that I've done where it's like you're acting off of things that are just not there. Like, yes, we are creative beings and that's what we do. We express, it's make-believe, we're making it happen. But in this way where it's still that precise, you know, like it's, it's very, um, uh, accurate and precise and, and specific, you know, and there's just a magic in that. There's a certain way of acting where you really, I find this new challenge is getting into the zone of that and, and acting off of it using, like working with the other brilliant characters and actors like, you know, Doug, I'm remembering a scene working with him and it's just like juggling all those balls. It's just, it's a constant dance. And so I feel Star Trek has taken any acting job that I've had and just had to like raise it to a crazy level. And once again, like with Patrick, what he was saying, it's like, I'm so inspired because the others, Sonequa and everyone, they, like these guys are on it. So it's like, I, I gotta be on it too. And I can do it because I see them doing it. So it's just been a whole game of upping my talent. And I'm just thankful at the end of the day for mm -hmm. it. Incredible. All right, Hannah. Um, yeah, I think I think it's sort of been echoed here, but you know, you're you're, you're working at such a level of uh, scope, size, skill, and talent that um, really trying to trust yourself that you can rise to it. You know, as a person, as an actor, of course, but also as a person. You know, like I, I believe in taking lessons that we have in daily life, and it's it, it is the stuff of our lives. You know, so it's not just acting. It's like how can you trust yourself to rise to the level of what's happening around you? So that's been a big lesson on Trek, and I think also um, for me personally, seeing how Sinequa has been a leader as as a as an actress on set. You know, she's she's the star of the show she's the number one on the call sheet and I, I find her to really lead with such profound love and care uh, and I feel like that happens all at all levels from what I've experienced on track you know and I, I, I really 
love it when I see people who are leaders and who are benevolent leaders. So, I mean, it's, it's a reminder that those people can uh, succeed and there's a way to lead that is not uh, with an iron fist. It's with a big old heart. And um, it reminds me, you know, to, to try and do the same. Fantastic. Thank you guys. That's great. A lot of insight we're getting into you guys. And I appreciate the fan questions. So another thing that we prepared for our fans is we're going to pop up some polls on your screen every once in a while. And this is for everyone to play along, including our panelists. So I'm going to ask my tech guy, Tyler, to now pop up our first poll. And everyone, which season of disco has been your favorite so far? Season one or season two or both are equally amazing. So I'm going to ask everyone to chime in now with their answers. And we'll wait a couple of minutes and Tyler is going to text me when he's got everyone's answer. While we're waiting for the poll to finish, let's take another question. This is from Becky and this is for Doug. Saru is one of the best written characters, not only in Trek history, but from anywhere. Your portrayal of him is Emmy worthy. Can you tell us about your process of getting into character for him? And is it different from other characters that you've done? Right. Uh, the difference with Saru is the, the cerebral work that I have to do for this one. Um, just the, the sheer amount of dialogue, uh, of science fiction dialogue, paragraphs at a time, and owning it with some sense of authority. Um, it is is uh, that's that's been my biggest challenge with Saru. Um, add to that uh, a th uh, you know a, a you know, what's now a two-ish hour makeup job, which is really mercifully short. Uh, contact lenses, rubber gloves that I can't do anything with my hands all day, um, and boots that make my feet into hooves uh, that I'm tiptoeing around on. And you've got challenge 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 on very on many levels so uh so preparing for him has is is physical and mental uh any any, any of the creature roles i've ever played over the years i've had to prepare physically and, and be in the best shape a skinny guy can be um just to keep just to keep the weight and the heat and the and the and the energy up in in those circumstances um and then also to keep your mind alert while you're going through some physical uh challenge uh, is it's just it's a very exhausting day and they can go on for 15 17 hour days from start to finish so uh, so to prep for that is is like uh, uh, I'm uh, you know it's, it's uh, everything get your sleep get your water get your eh, you know that's that's what I have to just like I have to do a lot of self-care and oh by the way which reminds me that someone on Twitter has a self-care Saru hashtag uh, 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 on their account name which makes me chuckle <laughs> Uh, cool. Thank you, Doug. So now we've got our results for the first poll. So let's throw it up there. So season two is the winner. We all of our viewers and our panelists feel that season two was the favorite. Perfect. So Tyler, why don't we throw up another panel, a poll rather, while we've got it. Let's do another one. Maybe. <laughs> Stand by. There we go. Besides disco, which Star Trek series has been your favorite so far? The original series, I don't know what TAS is, sorry, Tyler. The Next Generation, Discovery, no, not Discovery, that's Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, or Picard. Guys, help me, what is TAS? Animated, animated. Oh, the animated series, okay. All right, so let's have everyone answer that question and we'll hold off on that. While uh, we're waiting, uh, Derek, you still have yeah. my exclusive material, don't you? Don't, don't sweat it. I was just about to tell everybody, I know you're probably looking at your clock and you're seeing that it's almost one. Here's the thing, we're, we've got a little surprise for everybody. We're actually going to go an hour and a half for this live panel. And part of that is because we've got uh, a couple of more exclusive to do and some more questions. So everybody hang with us. I'm assuming everyone is having fun. Last week, everyone wanted to stay on even longer than the hour and a half. So this is great. I'm gonna ask a question to Raven 
And while she answers that, I'm going to block my screen because I have to work on something really fast. Raven, this is from Jan. Jan would like to know, how was it working on The Expanse? What was your experience? And, and, and I'm going to add one of my questions that I had on to that. What is, because they're both sci-fi, how do they differ between The Expanse and Star Trek? So I'm going to have you answer that now. Wow. Well, um, working on The Expanse was amazing. Um, I got to predominantly work with Elizabeth Mitchell, who I was a huge fan of before because I loved Lost and, um, and once. And um, so working with her was really great because even though our characters were in different, <laughs> different spaces, um, we did read off of each other. I would be there when, you know, she was filming her scene, her end of the scene, she'd be there for mine. And it was great because we just had this great chemistry from the get-go. Uh, she's a very generous actor. And so I, I easily was like, yeah, I'd be your wifey any day. Um, and that sort of extended as well to the whole, um, the whole family of, um, of The Expanse. Um, great people, some people that I've known from doing theater shows with, uh, from high school even. So just working with them was a real treat. Um, I wish, I wish, wish I could be a part of it some more. Um, but yeah, a real, a real treasure. And how it differs though from Star Trek, I mean, every show is its own entity, right? Every show is its own being, is its own family, has its own feel and dynamic. And I mean, I'm really blessed because the shows that I work on, I find here in Canada, um, top-notch people. Like, people that come to work happy. There's not like these crazy attitudes or egos or anything. Like it's like people show up to work, they love what they do and that love emanates out. Mm -hmm. um, so they are very um, different, the expense and, and, and track. Um, but at the heart of it, I feel like the same in that there are people that just love telling stories and we get to do it in space, like where anything happens um, from these incredible legacies and books. And it's just, it's, it's magical playtime. So I don't know if that really answers it. They're both great. They're wonderful. And I got to be on both. Oh my God, with great hair and outfits. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, now I'm going to ask Tyler to put up the results of that last poll we just took. And it looks like the next generation is the winner there. Fantastic. Excellent. All right, we'll do some more polls later. And to our panelists, just so you know, we're not allowing any of the fans to see what everybody chimed in. So no one's going to know, uh, know what you answered. That'll be your little secret. I'm switching over now to a screen share just because I want to put up our exclusive logo. We have a surprise for everybody today. This was done at the very last minute, and I'm going to let the fans out there know that this is an exclusive that I've arranged, and none of the panelists knew that this was going to happen. Neither did any of my team, and I only told my tech guy two minutes ago what was going on because we have a special guest surprise special guest logging on with us right now from Star Trek Discovery. Tyler, please bring on our special guest. There he Hello. is, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hey. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> oh. Hello, hello. Hello. Wow. Precious, Patrick, precious Doug, thing. Derek. Hi. Oh, oh good to see you. Oh, and, oh, oh, my cheekbones oh. hurt. My cheekbones <laughs> hurt. Oh my goodness. Hello, uh, everyone. So, for the viewers out there, uh, this is Sam Bartholomew. He played Danby Connor in season one. Uh, Sam, thank you. I know that you can't stay with us long, and I appreciate you taking what little time you can. So, thank you. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from, uh, actually, I'm quarantining with my parents because uh, they, they, they need a little help in this time. So I figured this was, this was the best place to be. Um, so yeah, so I'm calling here. I have this, is, this is sort of like my basement sanctuary. I have like my weights down here and I have my, my desk and my Wi-Fi, and that's kind of all I need. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's where I am here in New York. That is awesome. So Sam, we've been talking to fans and I've been asking a few questions and I'm actually going to ask, a question a couple questions to you that we asked the panel already and yeah. I want you to answer them so the first one is 
What was it like to learn that you were going to have a role in a Star Trek TV series? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> well, I think everyone at this point knows that this is such a secretive show. Um, and I couldn't tell anyone I was auditioning. I mean, I couldn't even print out the sides to do the tape. <laughs> um, so uh, it was it was a very really, really special moment, especially since uh, this was this was like one of the early bonding experiences I had with my dad. Um, him showing me all the old movies that he grew up with, um, and one of the few experiences I've ever seen uh, I've ever like seen my dad cry was when Leonard Nimoy passed away. Because um, I don't know, I guess um, he re he really connected with him. Um, so it was a really, really, really special moment for me. I think for for everyone, that's I don't think that's very unique, but it was it was really something. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, my next question for you is, what is the Trek gadget that you used on set that you wished really worked, and what is one that you're glad didn't work? Take a <sighs> second to think about that. The pressure was on. Everyone's already answered it. <laughs> Um, I really, I, I think because it would be so cool for it to malfunction like it did, uh, the, the, the lift, the turbo lift, um, I would really like that because that's just really cool. I mean, you know, you're just, you're just up and, and, and out. Um, the one that I wish didn't exist, right? That was a question. Didn't yep. exist. Yep. Um, oh, maybe the turbo lift. I don't know. Michael's jetpack was pretty cool. Can I change my answer? I'll change my answer. It was her jetpack. Her jet. I mean, that was that was freaking cool. I, so okay, the reason that popped in. So I'm I'm a little OCD, and but I'm also really nostalgic and a bit of a hoarder. So those qualities really complement each other. So yesterday I was cleaning out my desk and I found all of these all of these uh, renderings that they gave us, um, and and it, it's it's all the renderings of the screens that they had um for, for for our screens for our stations um and i i was i was looking at at mine and uh i have as ensign dan b connor i have that um that line when when uh michael is um going out in her in her jet pack uh and it's it's the, the trajectory her trajectory to the to the beacon uh that was busted um so that's why i i'm like staring at it right now that's why it popped up um yeah that was a Okay, um, I don't know. I, that, who doesn't want anything that's on Star Trek? Like what? What? <laughs> There's nothing that I wouldn't want in real life. Maybe the dagger that Michael killed me with. Is that? Can I say that? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that. Perfect. I'll say that. That'll be my answer. Yeah. All right. So now, can you show one of those like closer in your cameras and hold it up for? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll screen. try. I don't know. I'm, I may have like like a dot on me if I show this too much. Um, <laughs> let me, I was like, I was going to shred them. And then Derek, you texted me yesterday about this and I was like, Oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't shred them. Um, Dude, don't <laughs> shred them. Are you kidding? I know. I, you know, oh, okay. This is a cool one. Uh, this is, I don't know if you guys can see that. Whoa. So that's the Shenzhou main screen. Um, yeah. I mean, you just see the amount of work and that, I mean, this helps, you know, you talk about green screen acting. I mean, this really helped. I mean, it really helps us bring it to life. Um, it's a huge help. Uh, oh, here we go. A little progression here. When it's charging up, I guess. See oh. that? Yeah. And then, I, I mean, talking about like really detailed stuff. This is my workstation. So this is this, the, the screen I have in front of me that they went into detail with. Um, so that's when all the, the Klingons are coming. Um, uh, yeah. And this Dougie yeah. um, is the layout of the Shenzhou. Remember that? Yeah. Do I ever? Come, Come on. on now. Ooh. All right. Come on now. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I have like 102 and 101 scripts in front of me. I just have all this stuff that I found yesterday. It's it's, it's kismet. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, so here, let's take, while we've got Sam, because he has to run in a couple minutes, let's take a couple questions. We have a question from Tim, and this is for everyone. Outside of Discovery, which captain would you most want to serve under? 
So let's start with Patrick. Easy, easy answer. It has to be Jean-Luc Picard. Come on. Hands down. <laughs> Picard. Dougie, how about you? Uh, easily Picard, yes. Um, um, it's the accent, I think. I don't know. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Hannah, how about you? I mean, also Picard. I mean, it has to be Picard, but also, also I'm going to say Janeway is my second. Mm -hmm. Okay, Raven? Yeah, Picard. Picard all the way. Love him. And finally, Sam. I, I will also have to say Picard, but uh, close number two, and this is maybe a, another possible captain, uh, Saru. I would love, I think, Aww. yeah, I think that would be a really cool captain. Uh, we'll, we'll see where season three takes that. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. But yeah, I, I know I'm dead, so I know nothing. Don't matter. <laughs> people are gonna freak over that, but I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> All right. So let's take one more question before we have to let Sam go. Again, this is for everybody, and it's from Lawrence. Lawrence wants to know what is a a key memory from dis from filming Discovery, something that maybe really stood out to you. It's something you'll remember forever. Let's start, Sam, since you have to go, why don't we start with you with that one? Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it's both my last days. Um, so the end of 102, when I get blown out, spoiler alert for anyone, um, <laughs> of the ship. Uh, yeah, that was just a really surreal moment because we shot that, um, the whole, you know, getting blown out scene uh, last. So it was really, it was my last shot, my last day and the last scene. And, you know, there were whispers and like, oh, you know, you never know. It's, you know, and I, I didn't know I was going to be coming back. Um, so that, that will always stay with me. Um, and, and yeah, the last day, cause it was the same thing. It was, it was the turbo lift scene. It was the last day. It was like the longest day uh, with Sonequa and um, both, just both those last days were amazing. I'll always remember them. Beautiful. Raven, how about you? Yeah, it was uh, the walkie-talkie with uh, Saru. Um, <laughs> Doug mentioned it when we were doing a scene, and I just had a lot of jargon that day, and uh, I was a little bit nervous about it, but Doug, I mean, you just look at him, and he, he supports you with his big, beautiful eyes and his incredible <laughs> heart, <laughs> and I was just like, I can, I can do this, and we did. We just, like, we're just walking and talking, and it was the most incredible time. Hannah. Um, I mean, there, frankly, there are a lot. Um, but I, I will say, and uh, I kind of wish I had brought this for exclusive content, but um, <laughs> for the episode where I was sent off and, and we were serenaded by Dear Doug, um, I watched from the sidelines. Uh, I, I was just there visiting set, but Sonequa had gotten everyone to sign the the flag that covered my coffin um, and gave it to me that day in front of cast and crew. And it was like such a lovely send off, you know, it was like an, an, such an honor to, uh, yeah, symbolically leave the show that way. Beautiful. Dougie, how about you? Oh gosh, so many. Well, yeah, again, thank you, Raven, for that moment. We, oh, you, you have, you have, you've, you've come through so much. You I never, ever fear your own abilities ever again. Um, uh, for me, I probably uh, episode four, last uh, season two, when I am on my what I think is my deathbed, uh, and you see, you're seeing the inside of of Saru's quarters for the first time. Um, I'm handing a sentiment. Uh, I want to give a sentimental uh, knife that came from my sister to my surrogate sister, who's kind of become that uh, Michael Burnham, and I'm asking her to do something very intimate, which is help me end my life before the agony takes it. Uh, it was just a Sinequa Martin Green and I were both in tears most of that day filming that scene, and we both had that that I've been crying all day headache by the time it was done. <laughs> Uh, because it was just such a, an emotional connection and such a beautiful thing uh, with a with a kind of a happy ending to it as well. So it's like, thank yeah, uh, that was that was, and it was that episode. Uh, our director Lee, I'm going to forget her name now. A uh, uh, wonderful director uh, Lee. Lee Rose? She sent both Sneak and I an email after that to say this is why I became a director. The scene we shot today is exactly why I wanted to direct. Thank you both. So to get that from a director is like oh. Uh, 
because we're all, you know, as actors, we're so insecure and to, to get that kind of affirmation is just like, okay, I, to, I can close today feeling very accomplished and very happy. Patrick. Um, there's, there's so many moments, uh, but I'm trying to rack my brain. And uh, we get a lot of guests coming to set. Uh, and there was a certain day this season where the fine folk at NASA came down, a bunch of scientists, some engineers, uh, and had all these questions for us. And they were visiting the set and seeing all the stuff. And I forgot her name, but sh this woman was just standing uh, a little away, not saying much. So I went up to her and I said, you want to see my phaser? <laughs> and her <laughs> eyes lit up like it was Christmas. It was like a six-year-old child, so <laughs> ecstatic. Uh, and then we just kind of talked and bonded over that. So seeing that magic that Star Trek brings to people is really great. And seeing it from people who live and breathe it is also fantastic. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to let Sam go. Sam, thank you so much for making the time and uh, cast members say goodbye to your 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 Sam. Bye, God. Thank you so much. Thank. Oh my God. I heart you, Sammy puppy. I heart. I heart you. All right, you be a good boy now. You you know it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Derek. Thanks. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 All right, what a fantastic surprise. So since we're talking about exclusives, I think we should move on to, since, since Sam was an exclusive, let's move on to another exclusive. And what I'm gonna do, I, Raven, I think we'll go with you and then after Raven, we'll do Doug. So Raven, let's, uh, I'm gonna share my screen and Tyler's gonna take everyone down but Raven. Um, oh, I don't have to share my screen for yours. Yours is a show and tell. Okay, perfect. So Raven, what have you got for us? Please ex show us and explain. Well, feast your eyes. I don't know if you can see it here. These are some puppets that I have made. I'll do them a bit closer up so you can see them. But um, I did a show, I did a show called Addicted. It was a solo uh, one woman show. It was a play that I wrote. I played like about 12 characters, it was crazy. Um, and it looked at all kinds of addictions. And so what I did was for the main character for her story plot, um, I showed how addictions um, can move through a family. So because this play was a bit autobiographical, um, I myself have dealt with alcoholism, not only for myself, but in my family. My father was an alcoholic and he passed. Um, but what I was really interested in is how that does travel through a family line. And so these puppets I created out of uh, basically a paper mache base. I sculpted the base and then put the paper mache over it. Um, these puppets represented the main character's ancestors and where this addiction curse came from. And um, so this was a gentleman known as De Ayo, the evil, evil warrior, who, um, I can find it, who came across this beautiful lady. Her name is Naichua. She is... Uh, a sorceress of the earth, and he basically wanted to like overcome her and um, like burned her land, took her, made her marry him, unfortunately, uh, you know, had his way with her. And so what she ended up doing was she cursed him um, by saying that everyone in your family line from this moment on, they, they, they will be cursed. They will never know what it is to have enough. They will be cursed with addictions. and. Um, Little did she know, though, that since she was pregnant with his kids, that it cursed herself and her family line as well. So um, these were the puppets that I made. I made them out of things all in my house. At that time, I kind of had put myself in my own house arrest. I was doing my own, my own therapy and moving through things. And so just beautiful, um, you know, beads that I had. I make a lot of jewelry, so I, I or, you know, decorated, adorned their hairs with beads. Um, I had a bit of extensions in my basement, so I just put some extensions on them because what puppet don't need some, some extensions? Um, this little guy here is the original De Ayo. He's so cute, tiny. And we see through his transactions, every time he did something that was um, harmful, then that's when he would uh, escalate. And so we see this little guy from his transgressions grow into this guy. 
And then we see this little girl, Naichua, go from this puppet to this beautiful lady here. Um, so it was really interesting acting with them. I had them on both hands, <laughs> acting and, and using my body. Luckily enough, um, uh, I didn't drop any. And I think the play went well. Dougie got a chance to see it, so he'll be able to tell you if it went all right. Um, and then the last puppet that I'm gonna show before I answer any questions, this is a Janus uh, dual-headed, dual-sided puppet. So it was really cool to make, really tricky, um, because when I'm painting and working on one side, <sighs> I have the other side as well that I'm trying to you know, protect and, and sculpt. Um, so once again, um, same paper mache base, a lot of glue, a lot of uh, newspaper, a lot of paint, a lot of love. And um, this character, she wasn't in the last play, but I've, I'm writing um, a second installment where we see what happens, what happens when, uh, when kin goes against kin. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. These are my, these are my creations. The play, um, I did it in 2018 here. Um, I'm going to be doing it, like we'll see how things go with the um, social distancing and all, um, but I'm supposed to do it in uh, October in England. And, uh, and then I I'm hopefully will be doing it like in Canada, out east, uh, like in Halifax, and then moving it across, bringing it back to Toronto, and hopefully doing a US tour. So we will see though, right? In this climate that we're in, we don't know, but um, I know that I'll still be making a lot of puppets. That is fantastic. If you do a US tour, are you bringing it to like all the major cities or will it be in some of the smaller ones? Um, I would like to hit the major ones, um, like New York and LA. Um, um, I would love to hit Atlanta as well um, and Chicago. But once again, like we'll really see how things go. Um, I am self-producing. Um, uh, Co-production with the England one and um, Halifax. Um, we will see about that. I'm not producing that one, but the U.S. tour definitely. That's something that I'll be producing myself. And it's really a matter of, once again, we'll see what the climate looks like, right? We'll see how things go, and then it's me as as Hannah knows. You know, you you write a bunch of grants and you you do a lot of fundraising. So it's a matter of seeing how that end goes when self-producing. If something can get that longevity, you know. Well, we, we wish you the best of luck. That is fantastic. Thank you. Ah, fun with paper. <laughs> awesome. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch from Raven to Doug. My tech guy is going to switch cameras for everybody. And hopefully what's on your screen right now is our, this is an exclusive in-house con. This is an in-house con exclusive logo. And now that we've got Doug, perfect. So Doug is our last our last uh, exclusive show and tell today. And we, it, Doug provided us with three things to show. Doug, I'm gonna start with the two photos, okay? Good. So here comes the first one. So please explain what we're looking at. You're looking at two Sarus. It's rather confusing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this, this is a behind the scenes. This is what our, what our little set village looks like. When we're, um, when we're filming uh, on set, we have our cast chairs are set uh, off to the side in another unused part of the, of the set. So this, these chairs are set up in one of the, um, it's across the hall from the medical bay, I think. And uh, one of those, one of those uh, quarters rooms. This was from season one. Uh, you can tell from the, from the outfit that, uh, the costume, that that is from the mirror universe. That is Saru uh, as the subordinate slave Saru. Uh, and you are looking at the one, the Saru facing you is actually my stunt double, Boston Camillari. Uh, he is also a tall, skinny fella, but he's younger and much more athletic than I. So uh, he he can take the tumbles for me when I can't. Uh, when it, well, when actually when I'm not allowed to. Uh, and um, that so that season two was the year that I um, I tore my rotator cuff, and so my shoulder was. Um, it, if you remember this episode eight when we visited the planet Pavo, uh, Boston was on set that day with me because Sonequa and I had a huge fight scene with each other. So we each had our stunt doubles as well. So, uh, uh, Boston had to finish that scene for me because in one of my long swings of, you know, trying to beat the, um, the uh, uh, it, was a, it was a trans, a, trans, a communicator box that I was trying to pound and, and destroy, 
I, I tore something in my shoulder and I was like uh, out of commission. So Boston, bless his heart. And the fact that he looks exactly like me in that makeup, uh, it worked out totally, totally well. Uh, so that's us. That's us having a little, a little. Uh, this, now in a later episode, season one, we were in the mirror universe. So he had to throw Tyler off of off of uh, uh, Sonequa. It was a, something I could have done had I not ruined my shoulder. So I'm glad we got to bring him back in that day. And someone snapped this little shot of us uh, kibitzing off camera, which I just just love. I just I just love hanging out with him. He's uh, stunt people do not get nearly enough credit. Absolutely, we had a stunt man on last week from Star Wars. And that was one of the comments that was made by the fans is that they don't get enough credit and yeah, they make you absolutely. look good. All right, let's do another picture here, Dougie. What is this one? Oh, well, that looks like Saru having a sip and, uh, and looking over his, <laughs> his lines. Uh, that is me in my trailer. Uh, I, took that, I took that little selfie uh, on a timer uh, in season two, actually, I believe. And I just never showed it to anybody, never put it up on the social medias. I thought, well, that is that is extremely telling of what. Whenever I'm not on camera, that's what I'm doing. I'm, my my nose is back in the script, because uh, I am so incredibly uh, uh, fearful of going up on my lines and not not remember, remembering things. So if I have a a, a, a a talkative scene that day, you'll see me between takes constantly referring. It's like studying for final exams every day of my adult life. So, uh, so there, and you can see uh, that's when my gloves are off and my sleeves are rolled up. On a, on a longer break back in my trailer. Just a little, just a little side, just a, that's what Saru does. Perfect, all right, and the last thing that you're going to show us is going to be a video. Do you wanna set up the video, Doug, or do you want me to play it and then you'll explain? Let me set it up. Okay. Uh, uh, part, part of the post-production process that most fans are, rarely get to see any part of uh, is our ADR voice looping. Um, and so, uh, I actually had my iPad with me on one of those days that we did uh, here in Los Angeles. We film in Toronto, but but like a lot of the post production for me, since I live in LA, I go down to Warner Brothers and we do our uh, uh, we have a, a a sound studio stage where we watch uh, a scene that needs some dialogue cleanup or additional words uh, added in or line change. Uh, so here, uh, so this this is me fixing fixing one line of dialogue. This is from season one, so it's not content that that will. Uh, that's any kind of a giveaway, uh, uh, and so I, um, I would just, let's just show, I'll show you and I'll explain what you're looking at a bit once you once you play it. Okay, hold on one second. I need to hide my ah, I need to hide my desktop because there's stuff on there I don't want people to see. <laughs> okay, here we go, uh, Doug. You'll have to be quiet while it runs, okay? Because your mic is on. His heart rate is accelerating. His heart rate is accelerating. You buying any of those? I do. I like the first one more. I'm just wondering. Mm, the second one was a little. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was a little bit more. Okay. Well, but yeah, there is a little alarm at the end of production. I was gonna say. Yeah. Okay. Like let's, let's, get, let's give it a go with that. Yeah. More. His heart rate is accelerating. That sounded like production. So we can back one frame. With what? His heart rate is accelerating. That is uh, an expected side effect. With what? His heart rate is accelerating. Is uh, an expected. Wow, that is so cool, Doug. Uh, there, and there's something that nobody ever got to see before. That's been on my iPad for two years, and I, <laughs> I forgot it was on there. Um, that uh, yeah, just so you, so you know, the first time we tried to, to to do my ADR voice looping to clean up dialogue in season one, the first couple episodes, 
I went in like this with a completely clean face. And you could, and the sound engineers have such a fine tuned ear. As you can see, we did take one, two, three in that clip, and they weren't that much different from each other, but there was, there was a certain urgency that they wanted in the voice that they could, that they could hear that uh, they're, they're, they're so, our sound editors and our sound uh, producers are so, so good at what they do. One thing they heard after those first couple of ADR sessions in season one was that I sounded like, uh, like a human with a human nose. And so the problem was that in my Saru makeup, my nostrils are out here and I sound a little bit nasally, right? So, so they, were, they were thinking, oh gosh, do we need to put Doug back in the Saru makeup to do these ADR sessions? And I was like, oh, oh no, that, we, uh, that we, there's gotta be a fix for that. So in this plastic baggie is the fix for that. I carry him around in a sandwich bag. This is my Saru ADR mask that I, it was my idea too, instead of going into a full glue down makeup every time, just cut out the piece of the face that makes the difference in sound, which is the over my nose and my top lip. And then we, uh, we basically, so my, my creature effects makeup team from Alchemy Labs, Labs uh, sliced out a piece of a used mask that I'd worn on set one day, glued on these straps. And so in ADR, I can just put this on real quick. And now I have, now I have a nose that sounds more like Saru and it totally worked. It totally worked. Got it? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I, I've, I, I carry him with me everywhere. So he goes to Toronto with me because sometimes we do ADR in Toronto when, before the season's done. Sometimes we do it back here. So uh, I never go anywhere without my sandwich, about like Saru in a sandwich bag. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that, Doug. And uh, so fans, you, all of those exclusives where you, you only see them here, which is fantastic. All of our guests are back with us now. And my tech guy, Tyler, is going to put up another poll for everyone to participate in. Again, fans and guests, please answer. Here we go. If you had your choice of bridge station, where would you be? Captain's chair, helm navigation, tactical security, science, or communications? So let's have everyone answer that. While everyone's answering, I'm going to take a few moments to let everyone know that if you're enjoying what you're seeing, I'm hoping that you will spread the word and that you will join us for future events for the rest of May and all through June. Also, I know that fans are wondering, and uh, unfortunately, all of the solo chats are sold out. We got a couple of those qu questioned already. You can no longer buy any solo chats. However, we are still selling autographs from all of our guests. So if you didn't get an autograph as of yet, you are still able to buy one by going to inhouse-con.com, log into your account. Everybody is listed there, including autograph capabilities for our special guest today, Sam Bartholomew, who played Dan B. Connor. So right here is just a quick shot that I'm sharing with everybody. If you order autographs, some of you already know this, you're going to get a PDF file with the images that you can choose from and the check boxes that you are able to, to choose from. There's no limit on the number of autographs that you can buy. You can buy one for yourself. The, the cast will personalize them for you so you can put people's names on them. Think ahead for birthdays and Christmas because who knows, you may not be able to go shopping at malls. So again, all five of our special guests today their autographs are available online right now, and we're gonna keep them up through the balance of the day. So you guys can all go get them. Doug, Patrick, Raven, Hannah, and Sam. So I invite everyone to do that. Gonna take us back now. I also wanted to do my little speech that I did last week, and I, I'm going to do it every week from here on out. Aside from thanking all of the fans who tuned in today, as well as my wonderful and amazing clients, who are my friends and family. I, I can't thank all of you enough. And the reason it is so important is, is let me explain why. Uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19 has struck us worldwide. Everyone is suffering and Cool Waters is suffering just like everyone else. We are a small run family business. We are small business. We are the backbone of America. So anyone who purchased a ticket today or a video chat or an autograph, you are supporting small business. And I personally, as the president of the company, thank you for doing that because without conventions and without these fine actors who I represent, I wouldn't have a job and I wouldn't have a house over my head. So thank you so much for supporting small businesses. 
And I have to thank my webmaster, Sarah, and my tech guy, Tyler. What an amazing job they have done for me. So with all my preaching out of the way now, let's take a look at the poll. All right. It looks like Captain Cher is the winner. I'm a little... No, no, no. no science. <laughs> science. Yeah, Captain... What? Science is... is oh, it is. By one, by one point. Look, yeah. sorry. Thank you for... for we're pointing that I don't have my glasses on, guys, so I'm winging <laughs> off of this. <laughs> okay, so science is the one. Good, good, good. Captain Shear is second. Good. I, I, I was, now I am shocked. Originally, I thought I wasn't, but okay, I am. So that's awesome. So this is what we're going to do, guys. Um, we're just about out of time. Let me go to the panel, the Q&A. Let me see if we can do one more quick question for, oh, perfect. This is perfect for everybody. This is from Beth. Everyone answer this. How did you like working with Jonathan Frakes as a director? Dougie, why don't we start with you with your hands in the air, please? I, I think uh, many of us have agreed he's, uh, he's and, and, and uh, we love every director we've worked with. They've all been fantastic. Jonathan Frakes, though, having been an actor before, still to this day, an actor who directs, he gets us. He gets the whole thing, and he gets the world he's directing when he's on a Star Trek uh, episode. So to have him around, he, he's light, he's airy, he's fun, he's funny, uh, and, but he, he also will fine tune something. If you're, if you're having a moment that you thought was, was passable, he doesn't want passable, he'll come back and go, and he'll casually give you a way to find your, he doesn't over direct you, he lets you find your way into the perfect little pocket. I just adore Jonathan Frakes. Hannah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we probably all adore Jonathan Frakes. Um, he's just he's such a personality, such a big, warm personality. And he's big and tall, too. So you feel it, you know, right away. And, uh, and, and he, yeah, he's lovely. He's a lovely, lovely fellow. And also, some people who might have seen me talk about Star Trek at any point in time, like, um, uh, he was, Riker was my first on-screen crush, period. And the first time I met him, I, I was in full Arium gear. So he has no idea what I look like or anything like that on set. And we're off to the side. And I was like, you were my first on-screen crush. Mm -hmm. And he was like, that's what I like to hear when I meet someone. <laughs> and then I said, but I was six years old uh, or seven years old or whatever. And he was like, okay. Uh, you know, and um, yeah, he's, he's, he's such a fantastic, fantastic director, person, fellow, lovely man. He's a lovely man. It's great to work. He did my big episode, so it was great to work with him, you know? Um, I'll forever remember that. Oh, that was him. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. Right, all right. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Which you just absolutely, Hannah, you kicked such ass in that episode. Ooh. I love that we got to see the real um, Arium before she became mechanized. Uh, you were, and, and you played both you, uh, with such precision and, ah. Uh, it was I've, I've, We've talked about this before, but. So beautiful. I really appreciate it. I do. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Raven, how about you? Yeah, yeah. Um, Jonathan <laughs> is the most loving energy vibe person ever. So, yeah, being directed by him, um, he instantly puts you at ease and just makes it playful, you know? Like, yes, doing serious, wonderful work, but there's this joyous sense about it there's this lightness so that you can absolutely jump in and not like overanalyze or criticize or anything you just go 100 percent because he encourages that and not only of yourself but in everyone working around him it's just he's he's awesome a fearless leader and really fun great combination perfect patrick how about you yeah just echoing what everybody said he's just a lovely human he has his own kind of gra energy gravitational pull he, he's loud he makes jokes he makes everybody feels uh like they're having fun on set but at the same time he will come up to you while you're acting and just give you like a one little subtle note of direction and it could it could alter your performance and like bring it to a, a greater height. Uh, so he's, he's just terrific and we're, we're really lucky to have him. Perfect, thank you. Okay, all of our panelists are gonna be right back in one second. My tech guy, Tyler, is shutting down everyone's video. Cause I'm gonna do one more screen share. I created this for Doug and for all the fans out there. For the fans who don't know, who have never had the pleasure of meeting Doug, 
one of Doug's that, that he's known for. He hugs literally everyone that comes to his table, everybody. And you don't have to buy anything from him. He'll hug you. Doug is a hugger. And it's always on the social media when people are talking about going to a convention, they always say, hey, don't forget to get your Doug from Hug. I mean, your hug from Doug. <laughs> and I do know that Doug was telling me that being cooped up at home was driving him crazy because he couldn't hug on everybody and he didn't know how he was going to hug everybody here. So I created this for everyone out there, including Doug. I'm going to share my screen. This is another exclusive. Oh. Tyler, get rid of my video so that people have a full screen cap of it, please. Oh. All right. So what everybody at home can do right now is grab that on your screen put your face in that spot and there you go you have a hug from doug here at in-house con i'll leave that up for another few seconds so everyone can grab their cameras uh here's the thing guys the video is going to be kept online and you're all going to be given a link to be able to watch this again for seven more days you can share it with your friends or family so if you didn't have a chance to get this little image you can come back to the video and get it. Now I'm gonna ask Tyler to bring everybody back online for their goodbyes. Come on over guys. Every, here we, here's me, here's Patrick, here's Hannah, Dougie. That Andrew. was awesome, thank you for the hugs. I, I need them desperately. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, all right, so let's start with our farewells. Oh, and uh, by the way guys, and I told everybody this and all the fans, after everybody says goodbye, I please ask everyone, it's not like a movie theater, don't get up and run while the credits run. We have 15 seconds, that's it, 15 seconds of credits at the end. I ask that everyone just watch the credits and then leave the meeting and get ready for your solo chat starting at two o'clock. All right, Patrick, your goodbyes. Uh, I just wanna say thanks everybody for attending today. It was lovely for doing this with you all. Uh, yeah, thanks Derek and the team for organizing this. I think this is fantastic. I think this is exactly what everybody needs during this pandemic. Just a chance to reconnect with people, to uh, talk about what you love about Star Trek. And uh, uh, hopefully we can do this more often. Thanks, Patrick. All right, Hannah. Um, yeah, I just wanna say, look, this is so cool. This is so fun. It's so fun to do this from our own spaces and to be able to connect with everybody. And, and, and frankly, I've been leaving the, um, the Zoom, webinar, the Zoom webinar chat up the whole time so I could read what everybody was saying. So just like mad shout out to Belgium, Mexico, Brazil, New Zealand, Germany, Manchester, Canada, Finland, France, and USA, which are some <laughs> I saw listed up there. Um, and uh, thank you, Derek and team. Like, what a fantastic thing you put together. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Raven. You guys are amazing. This has been a huge treat. My first con. Like, this is amazing. So um, thank you all. Yes, huge shout out, Derek, everyone for putting this together. You're mad brilliant. And also, I do want to say um, a big shout out and thank you to Anthony P. and Rehan Blad, who found out that I am a lieutenant junior grade. So there we go. Thank you, guys. The Trek community is amazing. <laughs> I love you all so much. Keep watching the skies. We'll be there. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Oh, I, I cannot thank you all enough. This, uh, you know, this this has been a very trying time uh, on everyone, and uh, and you know, I personally I, I had several convention appearances that had to be canceled or postponed indefinitely because of this. So, to do this today and to have you all here today has been. I'm feeling the hug. I am feeling the hug from all of you so much. So, thank you so much for supporting our show and supporting each of us uh, individually as actors and with all of your love and your social media time and. And, uh, and, and, and this time today, this has been really, really, I feel, I feel so warm and fuzzy. So thank you all so, so much. Mwah. Love you madly. Thank you, Doug. All right, here we go. End credits, guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Please.